While many people may think that Champion's World Throw fell off after the nerfs, this is not the case. In reality, Champion's World Throw is still extremely powerful if utilized to its utmost potential. In this video, I, as a top 250 Gomen, will teach you how to master Champion's World Throw. Let's get into it. First things first, let's briefly go over the Mantra modifiers. The Mantra modifiers that you can use in Champion's World Throw are perfect in Crystal Lenses, as well as Vibrant Gems. However, as far as we know, neither of these Mantra modifiers seem to do anything. If you take a look at this background footage here, you can see that Champion's World Throw with and without these modifiers is exactly the same, so there's really no point in increasing the Ether cost of the Mantra by using any modifiers. Okay, so now for the deep gems, I suggest to stick to the usual. Either run Blessed Gem, a Bloodless Gem, or a Wind Gem. All of these are debatable for which is the best, but in my personal opinion, I recommend using a Bloodless Gem. For a long while, Bloodless Gems did not work in Champions World Throw and did not heal at all, but at some point they patched that bug, and now it comfortably reaches the healing cap. Sustain is always good, and Champions doesn't have too long of a cooldown, so I recommend using a Bloodless Gem on it. Moving on to the talents, Champions World Throw does have one, which is Skull Crusher. It's sort of arguable whether or not it's worth using this talent, since on one hand Skull Crusher allows for a potential combo extension, however you lose out on breathing impact damage. In my opinion though, I do not think Skull Crusher is worth using for a couple of reasons. For one, you can't really take advantage of the Daze effect from Skull Crusher, since the most straightforward and effective way to take advantage of Daze on Gale is through Champion's Roll Throw, which you just used. Also combined with the end lag on Skull Crusher, you don't really have enough time to take advantage of the days either. As you can see in this clip, the days from Skull Crusher doesn't even last long enough for you to force a block and take advantage of your opponent not being able to roll. For these reasons, I do not personally recommend picking up Skull Crusher. The one noteworthy mechanic that I really think you should know about for Champion's Roll Throw is slide casting. By pressing control while using Champion's Roll Throw, you can slide while casting the mantra, giving you a large speed boost. This can be useful for trying to make sure that you land the mantra on an opponent, especially if they're trying to range you and keep their distance. If you want to use this mechanic, be sure to equip the Kong's Clutch Ring, as it will make you slide much further and in turn get a much larger speed boost as well. Okay, so now we'll be moving on to the effective use cases, which is where you should be using this mantra in order to get the most benefit from it. But before mentioning specific cases, I like to state the core use of Champion's Roll Throw, which pretty much all of these effective use cases will be a subset of, and that is against blocking. This shouldn't be too surprising, as Champion's Roll Throw's Gale is the only true guard break mantra. Because of Champion's Roll Throw's many drawbacks, which I'll go into detail about later in this video, Gale's other mantras are superior in almost all other use cases, so you should really focus on using Champion's Roll Throw to counter block rather than in other situations. Using Champions randomly against good players will result in you being punished, so try your best to use it with purpose, which this section should help you find. Moving on to the specific cases, one very powerful use case of Champion's Roll Throw, or really any of the similar guard break mantras, is on Daze. Once you daze someone, using Champion's Roll Throw to punish is pretty straightforward. When your opponent is dazed, they won't be able to roll, so if you bait their parry by fainting, their only innate defensive option available left to protect themselves is blocking, which of course you can use Champion's Roll Throw to punish. So after applying daze, doing something like M1 auto paint in the Champion's Roll Throw can be very hard to avoid. However, this isn't a 100% true hit from daze, since it's possible for your opponent to read your faint or maybe attack first depending on the way you proc daze, but it is very hard to avoid and strong in common situations. Another effective use case of Champion's Roll Throw is fainting. When compared to other Gale mantras, Champion's is a little unique when it comes to fainting. Take the situation for example. You've baited your opponent's parry by fainting your M1, and now your opponent must react to the threat of your Gale Lunge. Here, they can either choose to keep holding F and block the Gale Lunge, saving their dodge, or they can choose to dodge the Gale Lunge. However, take the same situation but with Champion's Roll Throw, and they are forced into only one option to avoid being hit, dodging, since if they block, they will be guard broken. By fainting Champion's Roll Throw, you can force a specific response that you could use to your advantage, which makes fainting Champion's Roll Throw particularly strong compared to other mantras. Another common use case of Champion's Roll Throw is as a mix-up in parry trades. The effectiveness of Champion's and parry trades is weapon dependent, as some swing speeds will synergize with the mantra better than others. However, after the unfortunate windup nerfs, it is very hard to actually hit your opponent with Champion's during parry trades, since there is so much more time to react, so this isn't as effective of a use case anymore. An underrated use case of Champion's Roll Throw and Guard Break mantras in general is to punish the common habit of blind parrying when animations are hidden. I won't go into too much detail since I already covered this in detail in this video here, but this is a semi-common and smart use of Champion's Roll Throw if you can adapt to your opponent's kit and playstyle. My last use case, though a very important one, is if you can generally predict and adapt to when your opponent will block. Some players, especially shield users, will rely on their block a lot, and if you begin to notice this, try to adapt and punish them by using Champions when you expect them to block. Also, if you're fainting a lot, they may be forced into blocking if they waste their parry and dodge in the same window, and you can punish your opponent's block for this as well. Remember that with Champion's Roll Throw, you always have this option, so pay attention to your opponent especially if you're struggling with F-Holders and Shield users. This use case is very technical and very high school to learn, so this will take time. 
However, the more you can read your opponent, the more effective this will be, so try your best to be observant when you're playing. Okay, so those are all the most important use cases that you should know about Shaman's World Throw. Something I hope that you notice from this section is that even after the nerfs, Champion's World Throw still does have many use cases in which it can be effectively used in. So yes, not only is Champion's World Throw a completely viable mantra to use, but actually a very good one to have in your kit. However, this does not come without drawbacks. The first drawback I'd like to mention is one that I'm pretty sure most people would agree with, and that is the windup. After the windup nerf for Champion's World Throw, the mantra requires much more skill to use effectively, and you can't really spam it in parry trades like you used to. A lot of the time, you can be punished during Champion's World Throw's windup, so watch out for that. Another problem with Champion's World Throw is the end lag. Champion's end lag makes it pretty hard to follow up with an attack effectively. It also makes it so that if you whiff the mantra, you're in a pretty vulnerable state, so do keep that in mind. The next downside I'd like to mention is the hitbox. In my opinion, this is a really large part of what makes Champion's World Throw worse than something like Thunder Kick or Fire Blade. Champion's hitbox can make it really hard to hit at times, especially if you try slide casting it, so this is definitely a pretty significant issue with the mantra. Thanks for watching and let me know if I changed your opinion on this mantra, or if you already agree with me that Shaman's World Throw is pretty strong. Subscribe for more top build content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!